video. All right, so I'm gonna do a YouTube style update here, guys. Um, working on the truck, things are going kind of slow, unfortunately. Um, and I've hit a snag with my inverter not working properly. Uh, I'll get more into that in a little bit. Uh, but here we go. So the ceiling uh, came out pretty good. It needs some paint, obviously. Well, I guess maybe not obvious, but I don't plan on leaving it this exposed wood. And you can see here, some of these boards are starting to sag a little bit. Um, so probably add some more fasteners and then hide that with some trim. Um, haven't gotten around to that. Uh, I've completed my electrical cabinets mostly. Uh, this top cabinet, there's going to be a face plate that goes here. Uh, it's going to screw on. Uh, my MPPTs are going to go back here. Um, one thing you may be wondering is why I've got these holes cut out. But basically I'm going to have a piece of trim that runs along the top here. And that'll be my uh, cableway for all my wiring as it runs to the back. And then I'll add some insulation air gap from this uh, aluminum structure piece. Um, here I've got this false wall where all my wiring is going to run down and I'll have a breaker panel here. Uh, this is the 110 coming up and this will be my uh, 12 volts coming up from the batteries. And then the fridge, uh, my winter fridge, is going to sit right here in this area. And then I'll have a little seat I uh, need to install that's going to go here. And then let's get into it. All right, so uh, this cabinet is, if I keep the door open, Move the lighting over. Okay. So, what we got in here? So, this is where the inverter and all my other power entry crap is. Um, so, I wired this stuff up this weekend. Let's see if I can get better lighting. Um, and basically, I come to find out that my Xantrex um, inverter that came with the truck has an issue where what it's supposed to do is when you have shore power there's a relay and it switches the shore power to the house circuits and then ties in a battery charger to charge up the batteries and that is not working at all it doesn't recognize the shore power has been connected and it's driving me up the wall um, so I messaged the emailed the uh, Xantrex service uh, not expecting much there and I didn't get much back basically when I asked them what my service options are they said none you're screwed and then when I asked them well can you give me a uh, service manual or a schematic they basically said fuck off so Today, I'm going to try and video this. I'm going to pull this puppy out, um, pop it open. I've already looked at it, but I need to get it out of the cabinet and put it on the bench, take it apart, and see if we can figure out what's up. I kind of think it may just be a transformer that's opened up, but we will see. All right, so I've got it in the lab, and I took the top cover off. Um, getting a better look at it and I'll say you know the first thing that strikes me is you know Xantrex, Xantrex, however the heck you say their name they're supposed to be the top of the line as uh, another youtuber would say skookum choocher and you know I'm just not really feeling it um, so you know maybe they're just planning on the people buying these things have deep pockets and don't really care um if it dies or not but like for one thing example if you notice on the back here the fan which you know a fan fans they don't last very long right i mean it's a moving part shit happens they break this thing's riveted on i don't know if you can see that in there so good luck fixing it 
Uh, I have yet to figure out how exactly this thing comes apart. You get these bus bars, you know, the heat sinks, you know, I thought maybe these were rivet nuts and I was going to be able to unscrew it from the bottom. No, they're just riveted. Um, so we'll see if I can figure out how to take this thing apart. I'm hoping that if I take this end plate off, maybe I can slide it out. Uh, I still haven't figured out exactly where these bus bars tie in. Uh, I would guess, you know, 3000 VA, there's got to be a pretty solid connection somewhere. So, yeah, we'll see. Um, so, I guess while I've got it open, these are the two relays. Again, you know, relays go out pretty often. It kind of looks like they're just soldered into the board here. No sockets. No easy way to get to them. Um... They're switching the two phases of the 110 coming in. I'm only using one phase or one leg. Um, uh, I've just got a 30 amp service is all I'm planning on. So uh, I'm really only using this relay, but that's okay because for the charging stuff, it's okay if you just use one. It's really, if I guess, if you had a air, big air conditioner on a bus type setup. Uh, but anyway, so the 110's coming in here. I think the neutral's over here. Um, and I can trace out the 110. It's not making it past the relay. What I think is supposed to happen... I take that back. So the 110 is making it in. Um, and it makes it over to... The one place it does make it is it makes it onto this transformer. Um, so I can see the 110 across here but I'm not seeing anything on this side and it even looks like something happened you know the solder's kind of messed up on some of this so I don't know if maybe what happened is um, I'm hoping not but maybe something over here we started pulling too much current and then the transformer gave up the ghost I'm hoping the transformer just gave up the ghost on its own maybe there was something up in the windings and I don't think it'll be too bad if I just have to replace this. Uh, so, we'll dig into it and see where we get. Okay, so, I think I figured out how this thing comes apart. Um, it looks like, so there's this monster transformer in here. Um, and then this is the ground bus bar it runs down that side down this side comes along and then here the uh, chassis ground and the battery ground tie together through this bus bar then the positive one comes along the front and then ties to the heat sinks or at least this heat sink I think it ties the other heat sink as well and that's kind of interesting. Uh, I would explain the plastic dually blobbers there. Um, and then it looks like the circuit board, I pulled this one off already. They've got this spring clip holding all of these um, uh, transistors. I don't probably, I don't know if they're FETs or BJTs, onto the heatsink. And then there's a couple of screws to tie the board to the heatsink. It's um, not really looking forward to putting that back together. Uh, it seems like if you tighten it up just a wee bit too much, you'll end up cracking a, a transistor. Um, so yeah, this may <laughs> this may be the end of my inverter. Um, the inverter part was working. So I'm kind of debating if maybe when I bought the truck, I noticed the guy had a, s a different battery charger, and this would explain why. Um, so he was just using this to invert. But, you know, that being said, it didn't seem like it was inverting at the full 3000 VA. I tried to run a circular saw, and it definitely petered out. And... Originally, I was thinking it was because of the puny wires that were running to this from the battery. But now I don't really know. So, you know, this is 
would be not cheap to replace it. It's not a true sign inverter. It is a modified sign, so it's not the most ideal. Um, it's also not very old. The date code there, 2007. Um, October 2007. Oh, sorry, you can't see that. Would help. Yeah, it's not that old. Only 2007. October 2007. I mean, it's not old. It's kind of disappointing that Xantrex didn't have more to offer. Um, so I'll keep tearing it down. I'm going to pull this board off and we'll see what we find. Again, I think it's just this transformer that looks like it's open. I don't think I'm going to be able to test it with it pulled apart, so that'll be kind of exciting. All right, I'll uh, keep going. And we're back. Uh, this is getting kind of long, so maybe I'll have to make an abbreviated version. Got it open, kind of. I don't really want to undo this rat's nest up here. Um, that, oh, watch out, yeah. All right, so, if you can see, that looks like the transformer in question has bit the dust. Done blew the iPod sticker off. <laughs> um, I can't really tell if it's got a part number on there. I'm hoping I'll get lucky. Something that'll say, hey, this is how many volts, or how many windings it had on the secondary. We'll see. Um, these two, they kind of look like they're using them for current measurement uh, or something. I'm not really quite sure. I haven't really traced it out. Um, and yeah, it's kind of a mess. I was hoping maybe there would be some more clues on the silk screen on this side, but it really just kind of mimics the silk screen on the other side. So, uh, hopefully I can get that sucker to drop out. We can figure out what's up with it. Maybe I can bodge something in from the other side and do some testing. I, I really, you know, all these FETs, I wouldn't want to plug it in without them tied back to their heat sinks. I'll give you guys a far back view here. Uh, it's definitely a busy board, but then again, it's all through hole through hole, which is kind of impressive for 2007. Not a single surface mount part. All right, we'll keep at it. Good news! It works! All right, so it's like 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning, and I started this at 11. So, yeah. Um, so this guy was easy to pull off. That wasn't the hard part. The hard part was trying to figure out what the fuck it used to be. Um, I thought maybe I could pull off windings and figure out how many were supposed to have been there, but they kind of all melted, I guess. So that was after I spent a lot of time taking the core apart. And I said, fuck it. And then I spent some time tracing this out enough that I got ballsy enough to just guess. <laughs> um, so what I found is that the transformer center appears to be tied to ground. And then the two outers go through diodes. They're tied together. And then this trace squiggles its little ass, jumps across there, all the way up here, jumps again to there, and into this guy, which um, I didn't, I couldn't really see what it is. It's not a 78 series part, I don't think. But when you have 12 volts or battery voltage here then you've got 12-ish volts here 
So, that being said, I think a 12 volt at least, and I was playing around with the power supply, current limited, make sure I didn't fry shit. This was probably at least somewhere around 12 volts. Um, what I've got in there now is a 9 volt transformer. And it's just bodged by the bodge master. And, um, yeah, it works. I'm kind of happy. So, but let me show you my secrets. Okay, so I've got a suicide cord plugged in to the AC input. And here we go. Contact. All right, you heard that relay. That never used to happen. That's something over here. And after a little while, this guy will go kathunk. Maybe not. So one thing I'm not sure is it talks about having to have enough, A, the phase has to be right, and B, not the phase, the frequency has to be right, and the voltage has to be right, and in the data sheet, or not the data sheet, I wish. The user, there goes, see, right there. Look at that, awesome. Anyways, the user guide says something about like it's monitoring the voltage, but I, mean, I guessed, so I don't, still cuts on um, if they're trying to measure the peaks or the average voltage. And let's see if I can show you. This guy here, jump across there. What do we got? What do we got? 15 ish volts, which is perfect for charging a battery. Now, right now, this blink code, last time I checked, was saying it's too hot. One, two, three. Yeah. So, um, what happened is. I didn't quite, I forgot to plug in the, there's a thermistor on here. Um, yeah, so I'm excited. I'm gonna see if I can find a better transformer. I can solder on. I found something here at the office. Yeah, I don't know. I might go over to the surplus store, Tanner's, tomorrow and see what I can find. Anyways, it's late. I gotta clean up. Peace.